I want to sharpen this image for printing and this video we're gonna see uh, how I do this. It's a three stage process which involves conversion to lab mode, sharpening there and then two adjustments to this sharpened image to, to refine it. And so we start off by creating a helper we're gonna use for the refining. Control click on the RGB channel, create a new channel from this selection, deselect and go to this alpha channel, filter, stylize filters, find contours, which gives you um, the edges in the image as black outline. Gonna do a image correction tonal correction to bring out the edges a little more and clip the whites so we get a more distinct um, se selection here and we'll do a Gaussian blur of around three pixels maybe one more tonal correction okay so that's the uh, selection we're gonna use later what's white here will be the selection and black which are the edges will not be selected but that's for later now first what we're gonna do make a copy of the background layer and now convert the image to lab mode which since we're going from a smaller um, color space to a bigger one we can just do by image mode lab mode no, we don't want to reduce it. And we'll call this just, uh, we'll call this sharpen. So we know which is the sharpened layer. <laughs> then we go to channels, select the luminance, and we'll do the sharpening on this channel because this way it will only affect the luminance and the contrast and do nothing to the colors. That's also the reason why we're going to lab. So now we're going to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, unsharp mask. And for an 18 inch print, I do around 1.2 pixels radius, a little threshold to reduce sharpening of noise and this flat areas here, and a strength of around 150 till 180. I can use a high value here because later I gonna uh, refine uh, this sharpening and um, the strengths will be reduced a bit so we can start with quite high value press OK and now we'll take a look at the hundred percent this is the sharpened and this is before especially here in the wet sand you see the sharpening effect okay so now that we have sharpened we're gonna refine this and we'll first we'll copy the sharpen layer and we also copy the background layer once more i'm uh, gonna explain why we have to do this later but first now we call this sharpen copy highlights and set them out to Let's first go back to the <laughs> Adobe RGB channel, but um, this time we don't just use mode here because we're going from a bigger um, color space to a smaller one. We go um, to convert to profile and make sure that we have a relative color metric selected and we uncheck this uh, reduce to background layer because we need those layers and do the conversion so now that we we have still i suppose sharpen layers and now we're gonna set the highlights layer to brighten and the sharpen layer which we call um, shadows for example is just 
so you know which is which to make the distinction. We set it to darken. Reduce opacity to zero for both. And we'll now um, oh. <laughs> I just I've just drawn on this layer <laughs> on accident. <laughs> So we now uh, increase uh, the, the opacity again and, and we'll see how the shadows, the darken layer, just the dark edges of the sharpening will be shown. And for the highlights, just the bright edges will be shown. And I've split this because usually I like what the dark edges do for example, here in the sand or in the rocks, usually okay, but the highlights, it's usually a bit too much. And I like to reduce the opacity um, for the highlight sharpening to around, I don't know, it's, it depends on the image. Here we'll go with is too much so a bit back 85% for example okay this was the first refinement we'll now reduce this three layers to one and now you see why I had another copy of the background of the unsharpened uh, background layer because if I just reduce those two layers I'd lose the, uh, the overlay modes and the opacity. So I, I need this background layer below and now I can reduce them to one layer and I now have the improved sharpening layer. Okay, this was the first step. Now I go to the channels and remember the alpha one channel with the edges. I control click on it and I create a mask from it. And let's look at this mask. What's white will get through and what's black will be blocked. So this mask basically blocks the edges. So I'll call this normal, make a copy of it, click on the mask and with control I, I avert it. And now in this mask, the edges are white. This means they get through and what's black gets blocked. And I call this edges. So now I have a sharpening only for the edges and I have a sharpening for the rest of the image. And here's the same process. Opacity to zero for both. Zoom in a bit. 50% is usually good to judge uh, how it's going to look in a print later. But I also like to see it at a hundred percent and I start with a normal I'll increase it so you see where sharpening happens for example in, in those areas where there are not so many edges the sharpening will have effect you see it on this coconut and uh, since this uh, sharpening mask lets through also uh, dark parts as we have for example here. We're gonna um, double click on this layer stars and change this blending here. Without clicking we're gonna split um, the dark handle and thus leave, leave through um, the background for, for the darker values because the darker values normally are, are the parts in the image where you're gonna get noise more easily and we won't have the sharpening in those areas. Okay, so now we have the normal sharpening, sharpening which I leave to 100%. Let's see what happens. Okay, you see a subtle sharpening but not so much for the edges. Well now work on this edge layer and see what happens if we increase the opacity and you see it's now here this halo gets a little stronger 
around here and it's, it's again the, the bright parts which will have effect more so by this uh, splitting you get a lot more control for this image I'm gonna go with a high value also for the edges because uh, it's not so prominent here we have a very bright sky as background so this uh, halo which starts around this rock here is is not so um, distracting as for example an image uh, where, where you have another background and on a print later let's say 18 inch or, or something around 30 it's not gonna be dramatic so I'll leave it at this 94 last step you can make a group out of those two and if you want you can set another mask on this group and mask out roughly mask out the sky because I don't need to sharpen there it's mainly plain areas and I would only sharpen noise if I sharpen there and you could if you want roughly go around the edges and reduce the sharpening a bit just where it's showing okay so now let's take a last look at the 100% this before this after it's not much but for me it usually delivers good results and you can always experiment with the values with the initial initial sharpening and also with the refinements it's just one way to do it and maybe you get some ideas and you can tune this a little bit more to to your workflow so thanks for watching and for listening